In this video, I'm going to compare the GoPro Max and Insta360 ONE X. And by the end of this video, I'm going to get rid of one of these cameras. So make sure to stay to the end to find out which one I'm going to keep. So now that I'm over the hype of the GoPro Max, I've been using it more in a day-to-day -day situation rather than in test environments. And now I feel like I know the practicality and workflow of the camera against the One X. So now I feel like I'm better placed to tell you about which camera is better to use day-to-day -day and what the particular use cases are for each camera. In terms of video quality, I think it's a really easy win for the GoPro Max. The color of the GoPro Max is more natural looking. It's what I see in real life. And in terms of the clarity, I think it's sharper than the One X footage and you get a clean video in daylight and low light. Now it's not like the One X has bad video quality, it's just not as good as the GoPro Max. And one really major disadvantage for the One X is that you get this red dot of death in very sunny weather conditions. It's basically like this laser beam thing that would just float around in your video. And I don't seem to see that happening for the GoPro Max. Now there is an update for the One X coming soon and it will have a color boost, which will give it that GoPro light color. But if there's one thing that GoPro is famous for and it's one of their killer features is that they have the best video quality, color and clarity in the action cam industry. In terms of stitch line quality, the Insta360 ONE X has the better, most seamless stitch line and that's due to the thin body. And when you put it on the Insta360 invisible selfie stick, it will completely knock out the stick and it will look like you have a floating camera. Now the same cannot be said for the GoPro Max. It has a much thicker body and if I put it on the Insta360 visible selfie stick and I have to put it on that stick because there is no official selfie stick for the GoPro Max so when I put it on the same selfie stick I noticed that it will kind of cut my hand in half and when you put it to something closer let's say like a helmet it will cut the helmet in half the stitch line just isn't good on the GoPro Max at the moment so it's something that they need to work on on a firmware update but one thing the GoPro Max does really well is blend exposures between the lenses and that's something that the One X can't do but if you want the best stitch line overall the Insta360 ONE X wins. In terms of sound quality, it's another really easy win for the GoPro Max. It has six microphones compared to two microphones on the ONE X. Now again, there is an update for the ONE X coming soon where they're gonna use AI technology to make it sound better, to pick up your voice and boost it. But the GoPro Max has the hardware, six microphones and the software to give you really clear audio when you're speaking. Once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs and not enough food to feed them. So when they were old enough, she sent them back into the world to seek their fortunes. So once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs and not enough food to feed them. So when they were old enough, she sent them out into the world to seek their fortunes. And this is where I think the GoPro Max has a really clear use case where if you're gonna be someone who's gonna do documentaries or reporting breaking news or telling short form stories, like keeping this on a tripod like it is now and walking around it, or maybe walking with the GoPro Max on a stick and talking to camera, then this is certainly the camera you need to go for. Now, in terms of practicality when filming, when I'm filming with the Insta360 ONE X, and I'm traveling, I will have the Insta360 ONE X around me like this and I have it in the pouch that's provided in the box and when I want to use it, I'll just pull out the selfie stick out of my pocket, screw it into the bottom of the ONE X and this will reduce the chance of it falling, then pull it out the pouch and I'm pretty much ready to go. However, with the GoPro Max, it comes in this pouch which you cannot wear around your neck so I'll have to keep it in my pocket so now I'll take out the GoPro Max from the pouch and it has these lens protectors on, one on each side, which I'll remove now and put them in the pouch for safe keeping. On the bottom of the GoPro Max is a quarter inch screw thread and this does not come in the box, you have to buy it separately. And this is so I can attach the invisible selfie stick like that. And the last thing you need to do is make sure that the GoPro Max is straight so that the stick is invisible because if it's bent, then the stick will show up in the final shot. Now in terms of filming practicality, with the One X you can set auto exposure and manual exposure, but you can only set auto exposure on the camera itself and you'll need your phone to set manual exposure. Now the problem with auto exposure on the camera is that during the day it tends to overexpose the footage in very sunny conditions. When it's cloudy, it tends to underexpose the footage and if it's nighttime and you're walking, 
and it tends to make very blurry footage. Now, if you want the best results for the One X, you need to connect your phone to the camera, then set your manual settings, and then start and stop recording. But the next time you want to make another recording, the app will lose the settings you set the first time, and then you have to reset it again. So filming manually with the One X is a real pain, but that's what you need to do to get the best result. With the GoPro Max, however, you can set auto and manual exposure on the camera itself. And that's an amazing feature because that means you don't need to use your phone with the camera to use it. Now with auto exposure, it does a very good job of picking the right settings. It doesn't overexpose your footage, it actually does a really good job at keeping the exposure even. And even in low light, it does a really good job. And you can also set manual settings within here and you can also set shortcuts so you can quickly change the ISO and shutter speed. And you can also play back your footage using the touch screen to see whether it's been exposed correctly. And it has a speaker as well so you can listen to the sound. So in terms of filming, it's an absolute pleasure to film with the GoPro Max compared to the One X. It also has voice control. You can say GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, turn off. And I found those features to be really, really helpful when you're out in the field. In terms of battery life, I did a test where I charged both these cameras to 100%. I set them both to 5.7K, 25 frames per second. Then I just let them continuously record until the battery went to 0%. Now the GoPro Max recorded for 80 minutes and the One X recorded for 65 minutes. In terms of body design, the GoPro Max is much more rugged and it's also waterproof up to five meters. The One X is kind of fragile and it's not waterproof whatsoever. You basically got to treat this thing like a baby. Now you can get the venture case for the One X which will make it waterproof, but it's kind of fiddly to put in this case and it will also cover up the microphones so you won't get clear sound. There is no real way to protect your One X lenses when filming, but in the GoPro Max box, you get these protective lens covers and you can just clip it onto your lens like this. But the only thing is it will hamper the video quality. In terms of mobile workflow for these cameras, uh, specifically the One X first, you would take the footage from the One X camera and import it into your phone. And then when you open the One X app, you can trim that footage shorter. You can then add pivot points to your 360 video. So maybe at the beginning of the video, you want to look forward. Then five seconds later, you want to look to the left of your video. And then maybe 10 seconds later, you want to look to the right of your video. And then you can finally add speed. So you can slow down your video and speed it up. And this will help you create slow motion shots or hyperlapse shots. And the really cool thing about the app is that you can manually adjust the speed at any point in your footage. So you can have zero to 10 seconds as normal speed footage. Then you can speed up the 10 seconds to a minute as 32 times speed. So there's a lot of control you can have over your footage to make some really cool shots like hyperlapses, time shifts. The One X can record slow motion, so it records 3K 100 frames per second to get you that awesome bullet time effect. You can record 4K 50 frames per second to get really cool action shots, let's say of you skiing. And then you've got the 5.7K 25 frames per second for all your other general shots. With the GoPro Max, you would import the footage into the GoPro app. And then when you open the footage in the app, you can trim your footage shorter you can then add pivot points just like the One X app, but then you can't add speed. There is no speed option, so you can't slow it down and you can't speed it up. So then you would just export your video to social media. The GoPro Max has zero slow motion. The max frame rate it can film in is 5.6K 25 frames per second. There is no lower resolution with 60 frames per second in 360 video, which means that you can't do bullet time and you can't do action shots. Both these cameras can create hyperlapses, but they do so in very different ways. So with the One X, if I wanna make a hyperlapse, I'll record, let's say, a five minute video of me riding my bike. And then in the One X app, I can choose to have zero to 10 seconds as normal footage, and then speed up 10 seconds to five minutes as 32 times speed. So I have a lot of control over what my hyperlapse is going to look like. But with the GoPro, however, you need to use a mode called Time Warp. You can't record five minutes of normal footage because if you do so, there is no speed option in the GoPro app to speed it up or slow it down. So there's a mode called Time Warp and in this mode, you select which speed you want your footage to be at. So you can select two times speed, five times speed, or 10 times speed. And then your final video will be your footage already sped up at five or 10 times speed. So you have less control over what your hyperlapse will look like. 
There is auto time warp mode and it will slow it down, speed it up for you. But if you want more control over your hyperlapse, then the One X is the way to go. Now I know lots of you want to create these mini stories with lots of reframed 360 video. There is an update for the One X coming soon, which will allow you to create a multi-clip edit. Now with the GoPro app, once you've created your reframed 360 footage, you need to export it. So then you have a collection of 2D clips and then you can put that back into the GoPro editor and then edit that into a video. So you can add text, you can add music. It can also make the video for you to the beats or you can manually edit it yourself. Overall, if you want to make the coolest and most creative videos out of your 360 camera, then the Insta360 ONE X is the clear winner. But if you just want to make reframed normal video, then the GoPro Max is just fine. In terms of desktop software, the ONE X has Insta360 Studio 2019, and in this software for Windows and Mac, you can reframe your 360 video and export it for social media. You can also export it as a 360 video, so you can import that footage into PowerDirector, for example, or Final Cut. And if you have Premiere Pro, then you can just take the raw files out of the One X, import it directly into Premiere Pro, and start editing. Now, depending on your computer specs, the footage might lag in your timeline, so you may need to create proxies before you start editing. But either way, it's a really fast way to start editing in Premiere Pro. With the GoPro Max, there is a piece a software called GoPro Player. Right now it's only available for Mac where you can reframe your 360 video which is basically a copy of the app and you can export your video for social media. If you want to use the footage in Premiere Pro or other editors you take the footage from GoPro Max which is a .360 file encoded in H.265. You then need to get GoPro Max exporter Put your .360 files into there. The files will then be unpacked into a MOV file and then you can import that MOV file into Premiere Pro. And that MOV file doesn't seem to lag, it just seems to work straight away so there's no need to create proxies. Now here's one thing about the file sizes. So I did a test where I recorded one minute footage from each of these cameras using the same resolution and frame rate and then I wanted to see how big the file sizes would be. With the One X, you get two files, one for the back lens and front lens. So together, they would always average out between 700 and 800 meg. Now with the GoPro Max, it encodes in H.265, so it's always around 50% smaller. And that's true here where the file size is 440 meg for a one minute file. But we need to unpack that file so we can actually use it in an editor. So when I put it into GoPro Max exporter, the only option available right now is Cineform. So when I unpacked that 440 meg one minute file into a Cineform format, the file size ended up being over three gig, which is insane. So if you're going to use the GoPro Max for desktop workflow, you're gonna need terabytes of storage. Just warning you. In terms of stabilization, the One X is using flow state stabilization and the GoPro Max is using HyperSmooth 2.0 stabilization. I wouldn't say there's a clear winner for which one is better at stabilization. These are both exceptionally well at stabilizing footage. So whichever way you go for stabilization, they are both really, really good. One thing I realized when I was using these both on the end of the selfie stick is that when I use the One X on the invisible selfie stick, I just don't feel the weight. It just feels really comfortable to use. But the GoPro Max is a little bit heavier. So when I put it on the end of the selfie stick and I have it fully extended, I can actually feel the strain on my arm after long periods of time. So that's just something to bear in mind that the One X is actually more comfortable to use than the GoPro Max. When it comes to accessories, I think it's a really easy win for the One X. It just has so many things to go with it to give you really cool and creative shots. You have the invisible selfie stick, so when you put the One X on top of it, it gives you that floating camera effect. I have no idea why, but there's no official selfie stick for the GoPro Max. They did give a selfie stick with the GoPro Fusion. But they seem to have taken it out of the box for the Max. So the first thing you need to do when you get it is go shopping and buy a selfie stick. And if you buy it with a quarter inch screw thread, then you also need to buy an adapter so that you can use it. But with Insta360, you can also get the bullet time handle so you can create that awesome 360 matrix-like effect. And you can get the extended selfie stick so you can get a drone shot without actually using a drone. Insta360 just has that ecosystem there to get you started straight away. 
the GoPro Max is just a little bit impractical for beginners. Okay, so let's summarize this video now. I think that Insta360 is a really innovative 360 camera company and that GoPro is a really innovative action camera company. Now, if you want a 360 camera to get started learning about 360 or you want to make the most coolest and creative shots possible in 360, then no brainer, you need to go for the Insta360 ONE X. With just the ONE X, the invisible selfie stick and your phone, you can make so many different types of shots. Now, if you talk to the camera a lot and sound is vital to your video, then you need to go for the GoPro Max. There is no other 360 camera which can match the sound quality of the GoPro Max. I'm really excited to see the next generation of 360 cameras because we just saw the Camdao QCam 8K launch, which has 8K video resolution an external mic jack in a very small form factor. Well, a little bit bigger than these ones, but still a significant improvement to what it was before. So now that we have an insight into what the next generation of 360 cameras is going to look like, it just makes the GoPro Max look outdated. And right now, as a Windows and Android user, I feel like there's barely any features available for us to use this camera properly. You probably need to wait at least six months down the line to get the proper use out of this camera. I don't think it's worth the $500 investment. So I'm gonna be getting rid of the Max and I'll keep the One X until the next generation of 360 cameras come out. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful, then please hit the like button, subscribe for more 360 tutorials and news, and I'll see you in the next one.